Can a printer literally just be too easy to use? Now, I know that's a weird question, but when I finally got around to unboxing this uh, FlashForge Adventure 5M Pro, seriously, that's a hard name to say, that's exactly what went through my mind. I kept waiting for something to go wrong or something to need adjusting, but it just worked. And I'm not exaggerating when I say this, it was one of the smoothest out of the box experiences that I've ever had. This is one of those machines that feels like it's getting closer to being like a real appliance. It's something that you can just turn on and print with, with a very low learning curve, no stress. Oh, and before I forget, I'm intentionally being a little bit less nerdy and geeky in these videos lately. And I think that if you want to go to a website and read about all the boring specs, um, go ahead and do that. But I'd rather not talk over the top of people's heads, especially the people that are trying to get into our industry and learn about machines like this. Now, if you think I'm wrong and you want me to talk about all those nerdy specs, I mean, we can do it. Tell me in the comments below. A quick thank you to FlashForge for sending over this machine for us to look at and to share with all of you. They've had absolutely zero input on this video and they're seeing it at the exact same time as you. Now it's going to be relatively quick because I mean, for as cool of a machine that it is, I wouldn't say simple, but it's, like I said, they're getting closer to appliances. So everything about it just seems like the way that you would expect it to be. Now the setup process of the machine, practically nothing. The only thing that you bolt on is the spool holder on the back and you remove some retaining sh uh, screws that are meant for shipping. Now there's no fiddling with the extruder. There's no spending half an hour chasing down screws, reading manuals. You just plug it in, turn it on and you're printing. Now user experience really matters now. And you hear me talk about this all the time. I know that the hardcore nerds out here will disagree, but in many ways, user experience is more important than the individual features. Now, what makes this machine stand out right away is its compact, like fully enclosed design. The build volume is somewhat on the middle range size. It's about 220 by 220 by 220 millimeters, uh, which is kind of a good, I would say a sweet spot. That's why it's a popular size. Um, it's big enough for most projects without taking up too much uh, workspace um, in your, well, workspace. And it's easy to move around. Right? So we've been moving this machine back and forth from studio to studio quite a bit. And they actually thought about this and uh, they built in some nice little handles on the bottom of the machine and that makes a big difference. You don't feel like you're wrestling around some giant clunky box every time you have to shift it. The front and top doors are actually attached with hinges, which I know that's a really strange positive, but hear me out. A lot of machines lately are coming with completely removable lids, which means when you need to open it just for a moment to mess with the extruder, you've got to find a place to put the lid. And for me, that's a little bit of a frustration. It's kind of annoying, but I find that keeping it like this, like a compact appliance, that's a big plus. The enclosure itself is doing a lot of good for a machine like this. It keeps the temperature stable, which matters if you're gonna be running something like ABS. It keeps dust and debris out, which is especially nice if you're printing in a shop um, or even just a really dusty room. And for anyone with kids or pets around, having everything enclosed is just safer and cleaner. Now, my experience so far has been exclusively with PLA, but this machine is clearly built uh, with more demanding filaments in mind, and I'm gonna be testing those in future videos. So make sure you're subscribed, We'll have some comparisons. I'll tell you about that more in a minute. All right, let's dig into the printing itself because after all, I mean, that's what you're here for. This is a Core XY machine, which means it's got that speed and stability that comes from moving the print head on the X and Y axes while the bed moves only on the Z. So you're looking at less movement of mass and better precision at higher speeds. Now, speaking of speed, this thing can flat move like all these printers now coming out, insane. It has a max travel speed of about 600 millimeters per second with max accelerations topping out at 20,000 millimeters per second squared. This 5M Pro has input shaping. It's doing the work of reducing resonance and improving print quality even when you're running at higher speeds. It just works and it's one of the most important advancements I think in 3D printing in the last couple of years. It comes standard with a double-sided flexible PEI coated build sheet which is very normal now. It's rare to see a machine not have this. Prints just pop right off like you'd expect with a little flex. Now, if you're interested to know a little bit more about the science of why prints stick to PEI and why the industry chose PEI, I'll have links in the description on my video explaining this and also how isopropyl alcohol may be actually damaging your PEI. Seriously, go watch, it might surprise you. 
Um, it's going to be up here somewhere. I can never remember which side, but I'll have it linked here, um, but definitely in the description. You should watch it, seriously. Okay, now as for material compatibility, my machine came with a quick change 0.4 millimeter nozzle hot end combo and a second hot end with a 0.6 millimeter nozzle. The machine can handle all of your usual 3D printing filament types, like I say in almost every video now, but we have to say, because there's people watching, where this might be their first 3D printer. So it supports filaments like PLA, PTG, ABS, ASA, TPU, as well as carbon fiber, glass filled filaments and things like that. Now it does have a max extruder temperature of 280C. So let's talk about that 280C limit. That's a bit lower than the classic kind of standard 300C that you see on a lot of machines in this range. And while it's not a deal breaker for most users who are working with PLAs and PTGs or even ABS, it's worth noting if you're someone who's planning to push into exotic filaments um, or, you know, high tech, high temperature filaments like nylons or polycarbonates, you're going to hit a wall at 280C. I haven't had the chance to try out those tougher filaments, but we'll be getting to that in some upcoming content. And we're not just going to test it on this machine on its own. We're going to be printing it head to head against some of its enclosed competitors to really see what this machine can do. All right, let's talk about usability because FlashForge packed this thing with a lot of features. Of course, it has full auto bed leveling and that's probably an underrated feature on this printer. It's a seven by seven grid auto leveling system that just works. You hit the button, it does its thing and you're good to go. We've moved this machine around between studios and even some outbuildings and just print and it works no problems with first layers. We even left this out in one of the outbuildings on the ranch at 40 degrees Fahrenheit overnight printing, went out the next day and the print was there on the bed, everything was perfect and it was like an eight hour print. The touch screen here on the front is a 4.3 inch panel, super responsive, it's clean and very straightforward. Nothing feels buried or hidden in menus. I think even beginners will have no problems with it and uh, it just allows you to get things done super quick, I like it. It also comes with power loss recovery, which I think is the standard now for really any printer on the market and it has a filament runout sensor. Again, these are all standards, right? It makes sense that these machines have it. So if your power cuts out um, or you run out of filament, you're not just throwing away a long print job or wasting filament. Um, they're kind of smart and they help you out there. And then there's the air filtration system. It's got an internal circulation system with dual layer HEPA and carbon filters. According to FlashForge, it traps 99% of particles and VOCs. That's a big deal for an enclosed printer, especially if you're working with materials that are known for off-gassing. But if you are concerned with it, vent it outside. It's the smartest thing to do. Before we move on to who this printer is for, let's look a little bit at who FlashForge is. FlashForge isn't some new kid on the block. They've been around since 2011, and they were one of the early names to really push desktop 3D printing forward. They started making waves with their creator series, which was inspired by open source designs, but focused on being reliable and user friendly. Over the years, they've cranked out machines like the Finder, the Creative Pro, um, and the Adventure series, right? So this is the Adventure 5. And they've kind of built the reputation for being affordable, reliable printers that just work. And honestly, they've introduced a ton of people to 3D printing, whether it's hobbyists in our classrooms or even pros who just want something dependable, right? FlashForge has been there. Now, I am willing to bet that there are a bunch of you who started out with the FlashForge machine. In fact, if you did, drop that in the comments below. I'd love to hear what machine you had and how long you've been printing. Now with machines like the Adventure 5M Pro, they're trying to bridge that gap between beginner convenience and enthusiast level performance, right? It's that, here we are, we're back to the user experience thing. So yeah, they've been at this for a while and they've definitely contributed a lot to making 3D printing even more accessible. Okay, so now who's this printer actually for? Okay, we'll go over that short list. If you're looking for a no hassle experience where you can just take it out of the box, plug it in and hit print, minimal setup, this is it. If you need something compact, portable, and easy to move around, that has, you know, you like the built-in handles, huge plus. If you're in a shared space, like a classroom or workshop or home office, and you have limited space, right? This works well. And if you just appreciate a polished experience, this printer feels like something that you can really enjoy without consistent troubleshooting. Now, who is this printer not for? 
if you're chasing the cheapest machine possible, this isn't it. At $449, it's not exactly a budget model, and that is the sale price. If you're trying to push into super high temp materials, like uh, those more advanced exotic nylons and polycarbonates, that 280C limit on the hot end is going to be a problem. Up next here in future videos, we're gonna be testing some tougher filaments and put the Flash Forge Adventure 5M Pro here head to head against other enclosed printers to see how it stacks up. So make sure you're subscribed and like and do all of that um, so you'll be notified. Hit the, hit the bell. That's the thing that notifies you. Let me give a huge shout out to my YouTube and Patreon members. I could not do this without you. Seriously, you are absolutely amazing. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. And like I said, I'll have all the links to this machine and everything in the description below. Um, just let me add here really quick. I, f I forgot to mention this. I'm running Creality Hyper Series PLA on this. That's what I've been printing with. Um, just straight out of the slicer, basically it's Orca slicer, added the profile, and it's just been absolutely beautiful. I, I'm excited about 3D printing in like moving in this direction because they feel more like appliances. And if we really want people to jump into this space, into this hobby and for it to grow, this is the kind of machine that we need more of. Flash Forge wasn't the first person to come up with this idea. Bamboo wasn't the first person to come up with this idea, this style. Um, we've seen kind of these like cubed enclosed printers before, but if you notice, are they all starting to look similar, right? It's because it's appealing to people. It really is. Um, price points are good. I think the size is good. The features are good. Speed's good. Quality's great. Yeah, I think 3D printing is making some huge advancements. So I'm excited. So anyway, thanks for watching.